Christ the King, He who by his, his, whose blood shed upon the cross for us sets us free and brings us to eternal life. For the times that we have shunned the cleansing of that blood, turned away from the eternal life pledged to us, we seek God's mercy and new life. Lord Jesus, you reign forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you conquered death. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are eternal victor. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
one God, forever and ever. Amen.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in the proper order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ, then come to the end. When he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thirsty and give you drink. 
When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, did when, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? He will answer them. Amen, I say to you, what you did not for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, may Jesus Christ be praised both now and forever. I don't want to do it. Isn't there another way to accomplish this? I don't want this. I'm not going to accept it. Have you ever said those words? I'm sure every one of us in this church has. I don't want to be a widow. I don't want to be a widower. I don't want to have cancer. I don't want to have Alzheimer's. I don't want my kid to get in trouble. I don't, I don't, I don't. That is very much the key to understanding today's celebration. Christ the King. Christ did not want to be called King. He only, in some very personal circles, would hint to that. When at the time of his passion, he was asked, Are you the king of the Jews? He said, You say I am. What did Christ want? He simply wanted to be called the Son of Man. He sought no title. You see, when you look at both the reading from St. Matthew and the reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, you see what Christ really longed for. He longed to minister for the, to those who belonged to his Father, and were in disguise. A hungry man comes along and he asks for food. God the Father is hidden in him. And the same with those who are ill or thirsty or in jail or alone or naked. Because the shepherd very quietly goes out and does what has to be done. He just goes among his sheep and he sees what they need. At one point in my life when I had the great privilege of honoring those who did extraordinary service for the gospel, I became aware of this woman. Her name is Peggy Gale. Maybe she's watching this morning, I don't know. 
but if she is. Peggy is this glorious, quiet light. She simply goes about taking care of people. And one day somebody said to me, Father, do you know that Charlie O'Connell is sick? And I said, I had heard something about that and I've been meaning to get down to him. And the person replied to me, oh, Father, don't worry. Peggy takes him communion every day and also brings one meal for him. I said, every day? And they said, every day. And then there was this sweet little old man lived across the street. His name was Angelo Mango. And Angelo always said to me, Father, I go to bed at night and I'm looking at the window of St. Anne. And I know that I've woken up in the morning when I see the window of St. Anne. Angelo was a same-sex attracted person when that had to really be hidden. His partner had died years and years and years before that, and Angelo never recovered. As a result, Angelo was sweet and lovable, but he needed a bath. He also needed his clothing washed. He needed some help, physically. You can guess the, the line there for the end of this story. I said to somebody, one of the doctors, I said, you know, we've got to get some help for Angelo over there. He said, oh, Father, Peggy's on it. So I finally went to Peggy one day. She's sitting right where Bob is. And I said, Peggy, we're about to give out the Dominican Health Care Service Award, and I'd like to bestow it upon you. No, absolutely not. No, I do not deserve it. I said, you do not deserve it, and I rattled off. And she said, Father, if you want me to accept it, I'll accept it for you. But I don't want it. That's Christ the King. You see, in the letter to the Thessalonians, or to the Corinthians, when we read the last enemy to be destroyed is death, and when everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him. Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Not my will, but yours be done, so that God may be all in all. So that God may be all in all. Even Christ bowed to the will of his Father and what his Father asked. Where are all the places, my dear ones, that Christ comes to us in disguise and asks, Do you see me? Do you see my Father and me in, in me? Do you see my Father and me in what I've asked you to carry? I know you don't want to be a widow or a widower. I know you don't want this disease or that disease. Or I, I know you don't want. But if you accept it, I can bring good from it. If you let me, I can bring good from it for you now and for your glory to come. Now let's be clear. God doesn't sit up there and say, okay, I'm just going to zap pack with this. That's not. Life has its cycles. And in the cycles of life, God is working his way. He is asking us, to be subject to him, so that God may be all in all. Where are those places when we can be the shepherd who goes out and tends to
to the scattered sheep, even when we are the scattered sheep. Every time I stick out my arm, roll my pen, stick out my arm, and give myself that insult, you know I don't like it. But, somewhere in it all, God is doing something good in it. If it's only waking me up to my own need. Where's that for you and for me? I am the Good Shepherd. I pasture my sheep. For them I lay down my life. That's what Christ did. Even though he started by saying, Father, not this. Do not let me be called king. Simply let me be called your son. And in that sonship became the king of kings and the Lord of lords, the one to whom all of creation is subject. Father, I'll do it for you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us then and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and have a solid church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our shepherd king reveals the mystery of his kingdom in people who extend his loving care to the poor and the hungry. At the end of this church year, let us pray with the compassion we find in Christ our King. That all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit will be welcomed, healed, and given hope in the ministrations of the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the leaders of our country may find in the example of the Good Shepherd the best way to guide and govern our nation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That touched by the complete outpouring of our King who reigns from the cross, we may embrace the grace to turn to Him the sacraments of penance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That God will draw close to all medical personnel, giving them strength and safety as they care for the sick and their families especially all who have the virus, especially all the members of the genetic family who have tested positive, Brenda Siak, Carmine Rayo, Belle Calenda, Sister Mary Paul, Paul Herrick, Kathy McGinty-Radke, Samantha Poland-Short, and all those for whom we 
have promised to pray. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may enter the kingdom, prepare for them since the foundation of the world, especially all the souls in purgatory, those listed in the Book of Remembrance, and Angela Margiotta, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Father, knowing your boundless love for all people, with humble trust we bring you our intentions and lay them before you in the name of Christ, the universal King, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So that by offering 
himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace. He might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption. And making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will have will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, your spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Sebastian, our Holy Father, Saint Dominic, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing. In this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas and Robert, our bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the to our departed brothers and sisters, and especially to Angela Mangiata, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, we give kind and peace to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only the sick word.
Oh 